Hi, welcome back. It's Don Garbutt. M is a very unusual MIDI sequencer. We're going to be able to use this sequencer to control instruments live in Logic. It was actually created back in the late 80s, originally designed to drive external hardware MIDI devices. In one of my earlier tutorials, I gave a brief introduction to M. It's a really unique program, and I think it's worth taking a look at. I'd like to explain why we would use M in the first place. The most interesting thing about M is it can use randomness in the decision-making process to play notes. Initially, the human plays notes in the note order that you think is musical. The way M uses randomness is quite unique. M can allow you to adjust the amount of randomness that is used in deciding whether a note should be played in order or not. You've also got the ability to let the computer help you decide whether or not to play notes. In this case, track 1 is going to play 75% of the notes. In addition to that, you can invoke the random conductor. That allows the selection of boxes to be controlled by positions on the XY grid here. These boxes allow you to set up six different variations of values for the parameters. This certainly gives you a mega control over all the parameters and all the boxes. What we're going to get musically here is involvement of the computer in the decision-making process. Ultimately, we're going to be able to sit back and let the computer entertain us. It's a little bit like a sound version of the LHC. With this approach, you can turn on M, go to the pub, and come back and sift through the results and take the interesting parts that you like. Ultimately, M can make a MIDI file which you can load into Logic, and that way you could edit out the parts that you don't care for. As I'm sure some of you musicians out there will agree, making music is partly the act of discovery. Quite often, you never know how something is going to turn out when you first start a piece. Having access to all these MIDI variables live certainly gives you some unexpected results. First, let's deal with the setup. The first thing to do in M is to set up its MIDI inputs and outputs. Under the File menu, you have a MIDI assignment page. This value here represents the incoming MIDI messages. Port 1 is my hardware MIDI keyboard. These are the 16 channels of output that M has. Each channel is going to be set to one of the MIDI pathways that M creates when you boot it up. So this is a little bit like the inner application communication bus, and we're going to use M1. This route is going to show up in Logic as a MIDI input path that we can assign to our instruments. I've set all 16 channels to output to that MIDI pathway. We're basically done here. The next thing to do is to go to Logic and make sure that our MIDI messages are going to come in properly. We're going to Logic's environment. In the environment layer called Click and Ports, you see here inputs from M. The physical input object here represents messages from the outside world. Incoming MIDI messages are usually wired like this in a way that any MIDI messages from any source proceed onwards up into the system. So as I play my MIDI keyboard, you can see the messages showing up on the monitor. What we're going to do is disconnect that, and we're going to route our MIDI messages through M into Logic. So we don't want those messages also coming in from our keyboard directly into Logic, because we're going to pass them through M first. So if you click hold here and disconnect this cable, take the cable point from M1 and attach that into the system. There's our setup, messages coming from M passing through into Logic sequencer or the arrangement page as such. There's one more thing we have to do in Logic, and that is we have to go to Project Settings, to Recording, and select Auto Demix by Channel if Multi-Track Recording. This means that multi-channel information coming into Logic will be delegated to separate target tracks. What we'll do is we'll be able to load a bunch of instruments in Logic and set them to MIDI channels, and once we've made those MIDI channel settings, the multiple channel messages from M will be segregated channel by channel into the separate tracks of Logic. Now what I'm going to do is load 16 target instruments in Logic so that we can have some instruments to play with. Now you should go to each instrument and assign it a MIDI channel. Ordinarily this value is set to all and usually we don't have to bother about discriminating with a MIDI channel value, but because we're using M and it's transmitting on discrete channels, we do have to set up each instrument on its own channel. Now that you've done that, just in case some of your patches are using time variable processes like synchronized delays, I recommend that you match the tempo in Logic to the tempo in M. We do have to deal with a sync problem, which means ordinarily we might be able to use MIDI clock to sync the two programs together, but due to the fact that neither one of them will go to slave to MIDI clock, we have a sync problem, but we're going to be able to get around that. So I recommend that we set the tempos the same for now. One additional little detail here. With instruments like the Contact Sampler, because it's a multi-timbral instrument, when you load a Contact Sampler instrument, it sets it up as channel 1. Yet the messages coming in for that particular instrument, now that we've set the MIDI channels in Logic, may be on channels other than 1. So I recommend that you go to the MIDI channel on Contact and set it to Omni. That way Contact will read the channel that's been designated in the Logic instrument list. We're now going to engage each of our tracks in Record Ready mode. Now let's go to M. M is basically a four-track sequencer. These are the four tracks here. It has several different record modes. When you see a single note here, that means monophonic record mode. 
Every time you play a note, it advances you one step in the sequence. An option click here changes the display to two notes, which is the polyphonic mode. In this mode, it's still going to advance step by step, but it allows you to play chords. The third mode here is add mode. In this mode, as long as you have one key held down, you can add more notes until you've finished all the notes that you want in that chord event. Releasing the key allows it to move on to the next step. Drum machine mode is selected by having the mouse parked here and clicking with the option key down and activating this little bracket here. Drum machine mode means it'll cycle around and continuously record, and you can determine the number of steps in the pattern before you set it into record. But we're going to use step record mode for now. The musical length of the notes that you record is set in this box here. If I want to record quarter notes, I can leave this here. Or I can adjust this up to say 16th notes or 32nd notes, or actually any number of mathematical subdivisions. You could have 15th notes here if you liked. We're going to use the simplest mode here for now, the monophonic record mode. The play status of the track is set here. Usually you'll see four speaker icons active here. In this program, you can save snapshots of all your settings, and the snapshots can include whether a track is active or not. Putting a check mark here means that the MIDI note will pass through this track and out of M. The channel that the track plays is designated by this box down here. When you double click, you can see the settings inside the box. This setup says that track one will play channel one, track two will play channel two, etc. One of the real interesting aspects about M is that for each type of choice that you're making, for instance, MIDI channel output, you can have six variation boxes. We'll then be able to make these box selections in real time, and those box selections will enable us to get quite a wide variety of interpretation of our MIDI events. The way the pattern plays is determined by a cyclic accent group. These accent values determine the velocity of the note. Now you can clearly hear the accents in the velocities. The cyclic accent patterns determine the series of velocity values. Those velocity values are affected by the velocity range. Velocity range allows us to set the high and low range points for the velocity activity. So now I can select a different velocity range box. This number here relates to the percentage of chance that a note will play in order or out of order. Setting these values around here will mean that there's a randomness involved in whether it will play or not play a note, so effectively this is going to thin out the part. All the box choices, including the snapshot choice, can be selected by the mouse grid. Switch on the random conductor, sit back and enjoy. Save your jam as a MIDI file, and that solves the sync problem that I mentioned earlier in this tutorial. You can load your MIDI file up into Logic or whichever DAW you're working with. Here's an example of a piece that was made primarily with M. It's a combination of multiple tracks. Using M to play the ARP enabled me to play with the ARP controls while each track was performing itself. Thanks for watching.